Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Azam Khan. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Chief executive told to do more to placate local professionals in his upcoming policy address. Spanish Football Federation president who kissed a player on the lips as suspended by FIFA a day after he refuses to step down. And Team USA bags gold in both men's and women's 4x100 meter relays. After going all out to lure overseas talent in the past year, the chief executive has been urged to dedicate more resources to pacify local professionals. John Lee talked to workers from various trades in a second district forum for the upcom upcoming policy address. Janice Lowe reports. For the second consecutive weekend, the chief executive and his full team of 21 cabinet officials were out and about seeking views for the upcoming policy address. The consultation drive took them to a Shatin secondary school this morning, where around 120 residents came prepared with questions. A number of participants urged Lee and his administration to pay more attention to retaining homegrown talent instead of recruiting overseas professionals. This human resources manager suggested the government set up a fund for industries facing a manpower crunch. Authorities could provide financial incentives for experienced workers to improve their career prospects, such as going on exchange, she added. This man who works in the aviation industry was also skeptical about the government's talent drive. He felt that many people are deterred by the industry's uncompetitive pay packages, and the only way to address the issue is by having more subsidies. This civil engineer said that it takes a lot of resources to train a certified professional, but the industry has seen many of them leave in recent years. He questioned if the government could do something more to promote upward mobility for young adults so they can feel that Hong Kong is their home. Meanwhile, other residents are counting on the government to provide employment support. This wheelchair user pointed out that if he or his peers decide to get a job, they would lose subsidies for purchasing mobility equipment. As a result, most choose to live on social security payments instead, and he urged authorities to encourage the disabled to be more self-reliant. In response, the chief executive said that most of the participants' demands were addressed in his maiden policy address last year. But he admitted the government needs to work harder to help the needy. Apart from the two town hall style meetings, the government is also soliciting views through social media and email ahead of the policy address on October 25th. Janice Lowe, HKIBC. The chief executive also waded into the debate over a lavish farewell banquet for outgoing Wong Tai Sin District Officer Steve Wong. John Lee admitted the banquet on Thursday had created a negative impression, but insisted future officials should not be deterred from building relationship with locals. I'm concerned about uh, the trend of uh, organizers inviting uh, a large number of my senior officials. And it can happen on occasions that a large number of senior officials attend the same function. What I would like to build uh, as a consensus is I wish organizers to understand that the participation of a senior government officials at a function is strong indication of our support to the activities, no matter how big the number is, is already uh, an indication of support. So number doesn't matter. Lee suggested people who wish to express gratitude and encouragement to government officials 
can do so in a simpler and more direct way in the future. This includes writing a letter or email, or even giving them a pat on the shoulder. The Japanese Environment Ministry said the radioactive substance tritium could not be detected from seawater samples collected near the Fukushima nuclear plant after wastewater was discharged. The ministry said the tritium level for all samples were below 10 becquerels per liter, the minimum threshold needed to trigger a response for the detection equipment. The safety limit, meanwhile, is 1,500 becquerels per liter. But Hong Kong leader John Lee said it has no plans to lift a ban on aquatic products from 10 Japanese prefectures. He explained that the city has to guard against the accumulated effect of radioactive substances in the sea, as the dis discharge of treated wastewater would take at least 30 years. We have to ensure that for a system which will run for such a long period, uh, the reliability of the equipment, the maintenance of the system, and the possibility of a human error in an exercise that will last for over 30 years. That is why we have to take stern and serious measures to ensure food safety and uh, the health of our people. Authorities are still searching for a hiker who went missing around Ma On Shan since Wednesday. Ning Kwok Lung's family last heard from him yesterday morning when the 57-year-old made a phone call telling them from an unknown location that he was unable to stand and suffering from dehydration. He added his phone was running low on battery. Police, the fire services department, and the government flying service continue to search for Ning near West Buffalo Hill today, more than 100 hours since he left his home in San Po Kong. Turning overseas, Spanish Football Federation President Luis Rubiales has now been suspended by FIFA after triggering a storm at the World Cup final last week by kissing a player on the lips. Even his closest ally has now severed ties with him. Raymond Young reports. With Luis Rubiales now suspended by FIFA, even his biggest and probably his last ally has deserted him. Jorge Vilda the head coach of the World Cup winning Spanish women's football team, became the latest figure to publicly criticize the Football Federation president. Wilder himself was at the heart of a controversy last year when 15 players on the national team pulled out to demand his resignation. Despite the rebellion, Wilder was able to stay on after Rubiales and the Federation firmly stood by the manager. That alliance seemed to be still intact as recently as Friday, when Rubiales declared that he would not resign, and Vilda was seen applauding to his speech. But just one night later, Vilda released a statement saying that the team's World Cup glory has been harmed by the inappropriate behavior of Rubiales. Vilda also condemned what he called a macho attitude saying it has no place in a developed society. Rubiales, who claimed to be a victim of social assassination, insisted he had obtained consensus from Jenny Hermoso before kissing her on the lips. Hermoso rejected his claim, saying the episode made her feel vulnerable and a victim of an impulse-driven and sexist act. She also revealed the Federation had pressured her and her family to come out and support Rubiales. Apart from suspending Rubiales, a FIFA disciplinary committee has now ordered him and the Federation to refrain from contacting her Hermoso. Raymond Young, HKIBC. Three U.S. soldiers have been killed after the aircraft crashed during a military training exercise in northern Australia. Uh, this morning, two U.S. Marine Osprey aircraft left Darwin and flew to the Tiwi Islands, 80 kilometres to the north of Darwin. After 9am, our Joint Communications Centre received reports of an aircraft crashing on Melville Island, around two kilometres inland near Pika Taramal. This aircraft was confirmed as a U.S. Marine Osprey.
Those injured are 23 US Marine Corps soldiers, and we are doing everything we can to return them safely back to Darwin for treatment. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said the country's defence force is providing all possible assistance to its American counterparts. The Marines were on a MV-22B Osprey Tiltrotter military aircraft, which features vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. The Marines were conducting a joint military training exercise with Australia, Indonesia, the Philippines and East Timor at the time. Three black people have been shot dead in a store in the U.S. state of Florida in what police said was a targeted hate crime. The shooter, a white man, was equipped with a bulletproof vest and an automatic rifle with swastikas drawn on it. The suspect, in his early 20s, first showed up at Edward Waters University, a historically black institution in the city of Jacksonville. After being turned away by security, after refusing to identify himself, the man drove to a store which sells discounted goods and began shooting at shoppers. He took his own life after the attack. The names of the victims and the shooter have not yet been released. Police are still investigating if the school was the original target while confirming the shooter had a history of mental illness and violence. At 1.18 p.m., he texted his father and told his father to check his computer. At 1.53 p.m., the shooter's family members called the Clay County Sheriff's Office. By that time, he had already began shooting in Jacksonville. The Clay County Sheriff's Office, who has been assisting our agency with this investigation, received information after the shooting that the shooter had authored several manifestos, one to his parents, one to the media, and one to federal agents. Portions of these manifestos detailed the shooter's disgusting ideology of hate. Plainly put, this shooting was racially motivated, and he hated black people. On to the weather now. Sunny intervals with a few showers and isolated thunderstorms tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 27 and 32 degrees. Expect very hot days from midweek. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Sunday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Azam Khan. Thanks for watching. Good night.